Pancake Pie by Sven Nordqvist. There once was a farmer named Festus, who had a cat named Mercury. They lived in a little red house with a tool shed, a hen house, a woodshed, an outhouse, and a garden. Mercury had birthdays three times a year, just because it was more fun that way. And every time Mercury had a birthday, Festus baked him a pancake pie. One birthday morning, Festus filled a whole basket with eggs, but he did not start the pancake pie. He sat on the bench outside the kitchen door polishing the eggs. The eggs had to be shiny because Festus liked to do everything the right way. Mercury paced up and down the bench. Do you have to polish all the eggs now? said the cat. It'll be time for my next birthday before the pie is ready. You're so impatient sighed the farmer. He left the basket on the bench and took th three eggs into the kitchen. Mercury was already inside looking for the pie pan. Festus broke the eggs into a bowl. Now we need milk, sugar, a little salt, and butter and flour, he said, but he could not find the flour. Have you eaten all the flour, Mercury? he called from the pantry. I certainly have not eaten all the flour, said Mercury. Must have done it myself then muttered the farmer, scratching his nose. I'll have to go to the store to buy some more. You wait here, Mercury. Festus went out to get his blue bicycle, but Mercury did not want to wait there. He dashed out ahead of the farmer. Festus was about to ride off on his bicycle when he noticed the back tire was flat. Did you bite a hole in this tire, Mercury? The farmer grumbled. I certainly never bite holes in tires, the cat spat back. Must have done it myself then, mumbled the farmer, pulling his ear. You wait here, Mercury, and I'll get the bicycle pump from the tool shed. Then I'll fix the tire, go to the store, and buy some more flour so we can bake your pancake pie. But Mercury did not want to wait there, so he ran on ahead. When Festus got to the tool shed, the door could not be opened, and the key was missing. Why is this door locked? the farmer moaned. Did you lose the key, Mercury? I certainly do not lose keys, Mercury replied. Must have done it myself then, growled the farmer, poking his ear. He peered in through the window of the shed and tried the door again, but it was still locked. Then he heard Mercury whistle to him from the well. Festus hurried over. Oh, look, there's the key right there at the bottom, he said. How to get there? How am I going to get it out? Festus stared down into the well. I know. I'll fish the key out. Have you got a long stick, Mercury? I certainly have never had a long stick, said Mercury. I must have one myself, then, the farmer said. Somewhere. You just wait here, Mercury, and I'll go find one. Then I'll fish out the key, open the tool shed, fix the tire, go to the store, and buy some more flour so we can bake your pancake pie. But Mercury did not want to wait there, and he ran on ahead. Festus and Mercury looked everywhere for a long stick. They looked in the hen house, behind the tool shed, in the garden, in the woodshed, behind the sofa, and in the closet, but they could not find a long enough stick anywhere. Then Festus remembered that he had a fishing pole in the loft above the tool shed. I'll climb in through the skylight in the roof, he said. But first, I have to go get a ladder from behind the woodshed in Harem's field where his bowl is sleeping and using the ladder as a pillow. We'll have to get it away from him, but how? Festus thought so hard you could hear his brain ticking. Are you any good at bull fighting? He asked Mercury. I certainly have never fought a bull, Mercury gasped. Pity, chuckled Festus, because if we can't get the ladder away from the bull, I can't get the fishing rod down from the loft and get into the tool shed, fix the tire, go to the store and buy some flour, and then there'll be no pancake pie for your birthday. No pancake pie? Oh my! cried Mercury. Isn't there something I can do? Yes, there is. You wait here and I'll be right back. This time, Mercury waited and did not run on ahead. Festus went into the house. He took down one of the flowered kitchen curtains and he got the old Victrola with the horn. Then he went back outside. He, tr he tied the curtain to Mercury's tail. Now you look like a bullfighter in Spain, Festus said. He put a record on the Victrola and cranked it up. Harem's bull won't sleep through this, crackled the farmer. On your mark, Mercury, get set, but don't go yet. 
When the star-spangled banner blared out of the Victrola, the bull swiveled around and bellowed. Then he ducked his head, bunched up his muscles, and thundered toward Festus and Mercury and the Victrola. Go! shouted Festus, and Mercury shot off like a rocket. With a flowered curtain flapping from his tail, the bull took off after the flapping curtain. Festus crawled under the fence, grabbed the ladder, and got out fast. Three seconds later, Mercury streaked by with the curtain waving behind him. The bull stood panting on the other end of the field, but Mercury kept going anyway. He whizzed past the bench outside the kitchen door. The curtain caught on the egg basket, flipped it over, and the eggs all rolled into a puddle. Festus, who was right behind, tripped on the curtain and sat down on the eggs. Did you leave the eggs on the bench, Mercury? howled Festus. I certainly did not leave any eggs on the bench, Mercury hissed. Must have done it myself then, the farmer hissed back. Then he calmed down because it was Mercury's birthday. I'll have to clean up this mess before I bake your pancake pie, he said. I do like to do things the right way. Festus took a shovel and started scooping up the muddy, eggy mess. Just then, Harem arrived. Hi, neighbor. Working hard as usual, I see, said Harem. Indeed I am, Festus answered. We're celebrating Mercury's birthday, you see, so I'm making a pancake pie. He emptied the last scoop of eggy, muddy mess from the puddle into the bucket and wiped his hands on the seat of his pants. His pants were eggy and sticky too, so he threw them into the bucket as well. Harem's jaw dropped. If you only have birthday three times a year, you should have a real celebration, he told Harem. Pressing the pants down into the bucket, Harem just stared at the eggy mud in the bucket. It's my own recipe, said Festus proudly. Harem nodded slowly. But first I have to go to the store and buy some flour. Festus took the ladder over the tool shed, climbed up and disappeared over the other side of the roof. Harem stood looking up at the roof for a long time. Then he looked at the eggy mud in the bucket and at Mercury pacing back and forth with a flowered curtain tied to his tail. The Victroller had gotten stuck and was wailing, home of the brave, 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 brave. Harem looked up at the roof again and began walking out as fast as he could. <laughs> Meanwhile, Festus had crawled through the skylight into the loft of the tool shed and found the fishing rod. He climbed down again, fastened a hook to the end of the rod, went to the well and fished out the key. Then he opened the door on the tool shed, fixed the tire, went to the store, bought some flour and new pants, went home again and baked a mouth-watering pancake pie for Mercury. Then Festus and Mercury sat in the garden eating pancake pie and playing the Star Spangled Banner on the old Victrola just as they always did when Mer Mercury had a birthday. The End <laughs>